Good morning. It is September 11, 2017. After awakening from a sleep, I felt compelled by God to share this. Reason being, I heard his voice say, tell them. Tell them today. So I'm going to tell you what I experienced. January 20th, 2005. Not many people know. Some do. However, more need to hear about what happened to me. And it's never left me. And seeing all of the recent events that's going on in the world, I understand why he's saying tell them. People are panicking and so many disasters are happening. All I can say is read Matthew 24, Luke 21. There's another one, but I, I'm not sure right now. However, let me get to the point of me sharing this with you. Back in 2005, on January 20th, the day before was the 19th, and I remember feeling so horrible. I was feeling really bad. I just felt like a darkness was over me. I couldn't pray. I just felt just so weak. And I said, I don't know what's going on. And so I tried to lay down. And when I did, I felt like a sharp spear pierced me. And I jumped up. Now, let me give you a little history. I had just, um, gone through a lot of sickness and everything. I am born again, filled with the Spirit of God. Um, Jesus Christ is my everything. He's my Lord and my Savior. And I do believe He allows us to experience things to get a deeper understanding of Him, His love, and why we're here. And that day just felt so strange to me. I mean, I just I couldn't leave the house. There was such a fear that entangled me. I, I couldn't describe it. And I, all I could say was, Lord, I don't know what it is, but I know you got me. I know you got me. So it was time for us to go to Bible study. And I tell you, I could not go. I just felt paralyzed by fear. And I took my husband and said, I can't go tonight. I don't know why, but I, I just can't. So I sat on my sofa and I lied down. And as I lied down, I felt this dark shadow come over me. So I jumped up. I'm like, Lord, what is it? And I, I began to pray. And I laid down again. And that shadow embodied by so much fear came over me. So I jumped up. And I told my husband, I can't sleep. I can't lay down. So I tried to pray. And I couldn't. And I just felt hopeless to put it that way. Now I know I'm saved and I'm like, why am I feeling like this? So all day I, I couldn't watch TV. I just, just felt so paralyzed by so much fear. So as the night went on, my husband said, baby, are you going to bed? I said, I can't. I'm afraid to go to sleep. He said, you gotta go to sleep. I said, no, I just, I felt something imminent happening. So he said, well, you can't stay up all night, all day. You can't stay up forever. I said, you're right. So I said, whatever happens, happens. I know I belong to the Lord. And feeling so tired now, I remember looking at the clock and it said 3.15 a.m. And my heart is pounding. It's pounding in my chest because I'm so afraid to go to sleep. And when I lay down, as soon as I closed my eyes, I felt something jack me out of my body. Oh, God. This is kind of hard for me to recount because as I'm telling you, I'm remembering Everything I remember it so clear and so vivid. And when I felt it, I said, what's going on? 
when I felt the pulling, it's like I was being pulled somewhere. And I, my eyes are open and it's completely dark. It is pitch black. I say, where am I? I know I didn't go to sleep that fast. I know I'm still woke. And it's dark. And I'm like, wake up, wake up. I know you're woke. You know, I'm hitting my face. Strangely, I can feel myself hitting my face, slapping myself, saying, you're woke. You're woke. You're not asleep. And um, I remember hearing voices, voices in my ear. And I felt hot, like hot breath in my ear, horrible sounding voices. And I say, what is going on? I'm not home anymore. And I begin being tortured. And just all sorts of stuff is happening. And I can actually feel this. And I said to myself, I said, oh, God, I didn't die. I didn't went to hell. I said, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. What did I do? And then the torture got even worse. And I'm crying. And I'm telling God how much I'm sorry. That's when I hear the voices even louder. Demon voices that are saying horrible things because they hate us. They hate us with a passion because we're made in God's image and his likeness. Oh, God. It was horrible. Horrible. And I remember feeling their nails digging in my skin. And it's so dark. You can't see it. So that place is so embodied in fear, in torment, in despair. I remember feeling so alone, so helpless. There was no presence of anything godly there. And I, all I can think about is all of the people that came to me telling me about Jesus Christ and sharing his love with me. I can think about the times God told me to do something, to give this person some money, and I didn't do it. It's all of those things come before you. Your own mind is your worst torture because you're thinking about what you should have done, and now you realize, you just know there is no escaping this place, and there's nothing you can do to get out of here. And I hear the people screaming and hollering, and I say, oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. There's a lot of that down there. They want to come to tell, come back to earth to tell people their loved ones don't come here. This place is real. And that's why I know I'm compelled by God to share this with you now for such a time as this when so many things are going on in our world. Time is short. It is extremely, extremely short. And I remember praying in the spirit. <laughs> One of them ripped my mouth and said, we don't want to hear that down here. And when I heard him say down here, I began to weep. I said, God, I'm in hell. I'm so sorry. And the torment, it comes in intervals. You don't know when it's coming, but you know it's coming, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's like you're just paralyzed. You can't move. You can't stop it. And my heart was just so heavy, and I'm saying, forever and ever, and there's nothing you can do. And the smell, oh, the smell was so horrible. There's a horrible smell down there. I can't even describe it. I say, oh, I'm sorry. I just kept calling Jesus. The more I called Jesus, the more I got tormented. The more I got tormented because they hate him because of the power that's in his name. But when you're down there, there's nothing you can do. It's too late. It's too late. Please hear me. It's too late when you're there. It's too late. <laughs> Please don't go to that place. Accept Jesus now while you're here on earth. Because I tell you, everything the enemy offers you here, it is a counterfeit. It is nothing like the love of God that he shared with his son, Jesus Christ. He loves us so much that he will allow son of, 
some of us to go there to experience this place, to be a witness, to let others know hell is real. And it was never meant for us. It was never meant for us. He created us to love us. We were created to be loved by the Almighty, the Creator, the Lord God Most High. And He sent His Son to die for you and for me. Please receive Him now. All you have to do is repent and tell Him you're sorry and mean it. Get in His Word and let Him love you through His Word and spend time with Him. Now let me finish. And finally, I stop and just was being tortured because I realized there's nothing I can do. And your thoughts of all of the people that came to you, you realize how much he loved you. He was trying to save you, but it's too late. And I remember saying one last time, Jesus, save me. I'm sorry. Then suddenly there was a hand that snatched me and I came back to my body. And the first thing I did, I'm shaking. And I looked at the clock. And it's 3.30. 3.30. Oh, God. 15 minutes. It felt like eternity. It didn't feel like 15 minutes. Every minute felt like 50 to 100 years. And I'm shaking. And I'm just shaking. My heart is beating so fast. You talk about a fear that you have never known to such a degree. The human body can't take it. Not here on earth anyway. And I can hear God's voice afterwards as I'm shaking. He said, yes. It pained me to allow you to go there. But many people think this place is not real. Let them know it is real and that I love them and I'm on my way back. And he said, go look in the mirror. And I went to the mirror and I had a burn on me. My husband is witness. And it didn't dawn on me then to take a picture of it because I was so shaken by the fear of what I just experienced. I had a burn on me from where one of the demons grabbed me. And the Lord said that was my proof that I went there. And to tell people about this place, to let them know it is real. He's coming back. He loves us so much. It was never meant for us. So many of you may doubt this. I don't care, but I'm being obedient to the voice of the Lord to share this for such a time as this. I first started doing it personally with people telling them, telling them, and I feel it needs to be heard and seen on a much broader scale. So I thank God for the avenue and outlet of YouTube. And to be able to express and share the things of the Lord and what he's shown his people. Many of you know me. Many of you know me from way back. And many of you know me now. I'm a totally, completely person. He has transformed my life in such a way I can't even begin to describe. Yes, I still deal with things, but I know the power of him in me, the power of his spirit and resurrection. Immediately, the Holy Spirit quickens me, and I get it right. If I said something I shouldn't have said, immediately, the Holy Spirit will say, you were wrong, and I go tell the person I make it right. We don't have time to play with our salvation because he's on his way. Look at the events that's going on around us. All of the, the earthquake that just happened in Mexico. These hurricanes back to back. The wars and rumors of wars. It's evident Jesus is coming back because just what he said what happened in his word. It's happening now. People, please wake up. There is such a turning away from Christ. Things that we know are wrong. They're calling it right. Parents, please share Christ with your children. I'm seeing so much dysfunction in the world. Just calling it normal and it's not. People don't want to take a stand. And I know I'm just as guilty because I should have been shared this. But for such a time as this. The Lord is so good and gracious and so merciful. I'm sharing it now. Unto 
the glory of the Lord God. But make no mistake, God is a God of order and balance. In that next video, I will share with you how I also went to heaven. Such an amazing, amazing place. It's so wonderful. Everything is alive. Everything is living. Even the colors are alive. The presence of God is just so overwhelming. It's alive. It's alive. You know, when scripture says, the Lord, God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Oh my goodness. The worship in heaven, it's alive. There's no want, there's no desire that goes unmet in heaven. So yes, there is a heaven to gain by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Really meaning it. You'll know it by how your life transformed. Every person that reached to Jesus and he touched them, their lives were completely transformed. That's how you will know the real from the counterfeit. Jesus said you will know them by their fruit. So go ahead and look at their fruit and see if it's good or if it's rotten. Plain and simple. It's not time to play games with people. They're very soul. Our souls are at stake. Eternity is at hand now. Accept Jesus Christ while you can. This world has nothing compared to what the Father has prepared for us. Jesus said in my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would not have told you. And I'm here to tell you there are mansions in heaven. There are mansions. It's so amazing. No desire goes unmet. So that's my next video. I don't want to get too much into that. But I had to share with you that experience about hell as I see what's going on. Even with my own children who I raised in church. I'm continuing to pray for them. My niece is everybody. I find myself constantly crying out to God for the salvation of our youth, our young people. And if you are young, you're a teenager, you're watching this, please give your life to Jesus Christ. Why it is now? Why you can still accept him? Because he's coming back and he loves you so much. He loves you so much. It doesn't matter about what you see. Get in his word, study his word, study who he is in his word and his character and spend time with him. Spend time with him early in the morning when it's quiet. Make that sacrifice. I guarantee you, you will begin to experience him in ways you've never imagined. Make the sacrifice of your time to be with him, to hear from him each and every day, early in the morning, late at night, all during the day. Talk to him. Stay in constant fellowship and communion with him. And you will begin to experience him in ways you've never imagined. He is so wonderful. He's so loving. He's so kind. Oh, the joy. Because we were never meant to go to hell. That place was created for Satan and all of those that rebelled against him. So how be it those of you who reject him and rebel, you're going to go there. Because you're allowing that same spirit to manipulate you. He hates us. The devil hates us with such a passion. I can't even describe the hate, the hatred I felt when I was down there, how they tormented you because you constantly remind him of why God made you. He made us in his image and in his likeness. So I adjure you today, make that step right now. Invite the Lord Jesus into your heart. Repent. And when you ask him for repentance, I'm here to tell you, he does forgive you. There is nothing, nothing so bad that the power of God cannot forgive except blasphemy. And blasphemy is attributing the power of God to Satan, rejecting him, calling you. Because if you're rejecting him, how can he save you if you're not reject, if you're going to reject the one that's trying to save you? That's the only thing that will keep you from enjoying him. So please, 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 please. I'm begging you. I'm pleading for your soul right now. As I'm prompted by the spirit of the Lord. He died for you on Calvary. He thought of each and every one of us when he was on that cross. That we would not go to that horrible place. Because when you go there, there's no coming back. There's no coming back. 
And I thank God I didn't stay. I thank him I didn't stay. I'm sorry. Because he loves us. Hey, there are some of us he allows to go there because he trusts us to share it. So I'm challenging everyone has ever had an experience, share it. Let the people know. Because the more people share their story, the more others, non-believers, will realize there's something to this. These people must be telling the truth. And those of you who are watching who don't believe this, watch more stories of people that have been to hell. Compare their experiences. It, compare what they've experienced, what they've seen. Compare it. Let the evidence speak for itself. And those that have been to heaven, compare the evidence. Compare it and see. These people are not lying. People who don't know each other have similar stories. Oh, Father, I just thank you for this opportunity to share this with them. Please. And I want to share one more thing. If you've ever been sleeping and felt like you were paralyzed, they call it sleep paralysis. But that is an attack of the enemy. Those are demonic forces that want to keep you and entangle you and grip you. If you've ever gone through that, you call on the name Jesus. You break free as soon as you can and you call on Jesus. You invite him in and you change the way you're living. You set the atmosphere in your home and all around you to where the presence of God can manifest his glory. So you can live in peace. God created us. To be in union and fellowship with him in peace. And I just want to thank you for this opportunity to share this with you. God loves you so much. And because I'm in him, I love you too. Please accept Jesus Christ now. Why is today? Why is now? Why is still time? Because things are going to get a whole lot worse. But he promises to take care of his own. Wouldn't you take care of your children if you saw they were in trouble or they were hurting or they were in need? That's what love does. Love sees a need and it responds. <sighs> oh, Father, I thank you so much. Let them feel my heart as I share this, knowing that it's from you. You love them and you don't want them to perish. I don't care what you say about me. I don't care about the comments you leave. I don't care. I care about your soul and where it will spend eternity. Please, please accept Jesus Christ now. Now, now you can repent. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Help me to live for you so I will never go to that place that she talked about. Oh, Lord, and allow his power to transform your life. You will know because people who know you, they'll say you start, you look different. Because that's what they say about me. You look different now. Because I've allowed the power of Christ to transform my heart and my life. And I spend time with him every day. I talk to him in the morning. I talk to him during the day. I sing to him. And I talk to him at night. I constantly keep my mind fixed and focused on him. And I'm sweating. And I'm crying because... Oh, the importance of what I'm discussing here today. Nothing else takes precedence. Thank you, Lord. Uh, let them hear your heart. Let them feel you. To respond with, yes, Lord, here I am. I receive you. For the word of God said, they that believe on the Lord shall be saved. So call them today. In Jesus' name, I bless you. And I pray that this has helped you. And that you will repent of your sins. And allow Jesus in your heart. I tell you what. You will never know love like his. Ever. Ever. Mm. And I thank you. God bless you. Have an amazing day wonderful God-filled day.